kind of legal arenas, um, political campaigns, um, or just in the discourse of various, uh, various political and religious actors. Um, he was trying to make sense of, of these conflicts and noting that these conflicts seem to have these common threads that run through them even though they, they seem to be conflicts about a number of different issues such as the family, art, education, law, and politics. Um, and then more than just kind of trying to make sense of the conflicts, he was trying to, to figure out um, what were the ways that, uh, that participants in these conflicts thought about themselves, the, their own arguments, thought about the other groups that they're arguing with, and then thought about the role uh, of politics and the state in these arguments. Um, if he were to rewrite the book again today, um, in terms of issues, he'd probably look at things like stem cell research, gay marriage, the recent uh, Terry Schiavo um, case from a number of years ago on end-of-life issues. So he'd probably pick a slightly different set of issues, but he would use the same method of basically saying, I'm going to take representative actors from different sides of the argument around these issues and try and figure out what it is uh, they're arguing about and then what kind of structures this, this cultural conflict. The phrase culture war itself dates from the, the late 19th century when Otto von Bismarck uh, in Prussia, what eventually be, soon after became Germany in the 1880s, um, talked about a Kulturkampf, which is German for culture war, that he was basically waging as a way to kind of centralize the Prussian state and all the territories around it and eventually generate uh, Germany in the late 19th century. So that's kind of culture wars analytic concept. But this, this analytical concept over time has taken on a life of its own. It's become a mobilizing theme or a strategy. You can go to YouTube right now or to Google right now and just type in Pat Buchanan Culture War. Because in 1992, so two years after this book was started, and remember, the, or written, and remember this book's basically kind of a, it's a sociological or historical text, but uh, these things have a life of their own once they're kind of out there uh, in the world. So Pat Buchanan in 1992, he had basically was, had made a failed run to be the nominee, uh, the Republican nominee for president that year. And he was invited to give uh, a speech at the Republican uh, uh, convention. And you can Google this and you can see it on YouTube, but Pat Buchanan gets up there and says, we, we, and he means by this Republican party, are engaged in a culture war in the United States of America. And what he meant by that was really uh, his, own, his own particular views in particular. But he was, what he meant was to try and link a range of basically issues, uh, especially at that time, things like abortion, schooling, welfare benefits, things like that. He was trying to link those together to force the Republican Party basically to, to kind of take that certain range of issues as the core of its program. And what he's also trying to basically kind of drum up support uh, for that program and for the political cause of trying to gain political plow power to basically institute their uh, particular uh, political ideas and political strategies. Um, and it was effective at one level. Uh, the, Republic the Republicans lost the presidential election th that year, um, but by 1994 in what's known as the Republican Revolution, they took over uh, both houses of Congress and then started a series of, of basically acts in the mid-90s um, that were in line with the with the certain social or ethical or moral uh, stances of the party at that time. So it became an actual technical mobilizing strategy uh, for the Republican Party at that time. And what better way at some level to mobilize people who are emphatic and engaged in a political struggle already, what better way than kind of up the ante and say, you know what, this isn't just this isn't just a friendly wrestling match, this is a war, and then all the connotations of war come along with it. Winner take all, two sides being totally different from each other, anything goes in this struggle, and finally the, the idea or kind of this vision, if we change it now, then things change for all time. Now things didn't quite work out that way over the last then 15 years for the Republican Party, but at the time at least this is a core mobilizing strategy. And then of course, uh, uh, Conflict in general, so when you use uh, something like this as a mobilizing strategy, um, conflict in general is a way to kind of uh, protect interests and kind of ideas or visions of the common good, 
particularly when there are there are power changes going on uh, in an arena. So in the early 1990s, uh, there was a great deal of kind of fluctuation. Reagan was well out of power by then. The first George Bush presidency hadn't been all that stunning in terms of its ability to kind of consolidate Republican uh, power. So there was this kind of shifting in power towards a Democratic president. Uh, also, this rise, this is kind of the peak of the rise of of what was known as the Christian coalition, basically the injection of certain religious themes and religious mobilizing strategies into politics. Politics. So conflict in and of itself is an indicator basically of competition that's going on between groups over resources and or over different visions of the common good. And that's exactly what was happening at that point in the early 1990s. Okay, so that's a little bit of background on, on the kind of uh, what is the, the uh, this idea of the culture war, but let's get actually into uh, James Davison Hunter's argument, which most of you picked up on when I, but I want to make sure you get that. So we'll just say it's called Hunter's argument. And there's actually a number of arguments in the book, but we'll kind of try and pull out uh, the main ones. Um, couple of key things. First off, um, Hunter argues, and another author by the name of Robert Wolf now verifies that in the past, relig uh, conflicts in society over key uh, uh, visions of the common good over, or over social issues were uh, religious conflicts. And they're religious in the sense that there were conflicts between different uh, religious groups. So many of you commented and even commented in not knowing the probably the wrong word history states of that was based on religious history often aligned or race and so to uh, to attack kind of on the basis of religion was also uh, to attack a group or to try and pressure a group on the basis of those other characters uh, and then at the time these sorts of religious conflicts centered on particular schools is one of the main ones of it um, then also kind of uh, uh, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Sorry, I kind of drew a blank there for a second. Uh, so schools being uh, the kind of the main arena of conflict, but then others are kind of like uh, within state houses, uh, various laws or control of the cities. These were all kind of localized arenas of conflict, um, that and with the conflict being generated by by um, different religious groups. So it was, uh, you know, possibly. Catholic against Protestant, Protestant against Jew, uh, almost all religious groups against Mormons. So, and at various places, these conflicts would flare up, uh, oftentimes partly generated by other issues, but nonetheless would flare up, have a religious tenor to them. And so a, a good visual of the time is that um, we could think of religious groups like this. We'll say like in the, let's say in the year 1900, this is like uh, Protestants uh, in the United States. And we'll say there was maybe this many Catholics, and let's pick one other group, we'll say, well, maybe there was this many Jews. And the argument by Hunter and also by Robert Withnow is that that, that is, that is uh, religion was structured in such a way that the difference between religious groups, and we could even go into denominations within these, but in general, the, the, the structure of difference between religious traditions was that they not only had kind of different beliefs and different uh, rituals, uh, but oftentimes within each of these had a very um, coherent kind of political strategies and social visions or, or political visions. Well, 